My name is Richard Tarnowski, and I will be talking about desperately seeking context, context, context in localization. And uh, a few disclaimers. First, um, as you've probably noticed and heard, I'm not a native speaker, and um, therefore I'm prone to making mistakes and stutter and forget some words, and uh, probably I might even stand motionless for for a minute, like a statue. In that case, feel free to just throw any in inanimate object in my general that direction and I should try to avoid it somehow, thus awaking myself from a slumber. Um, that's what the th that was the first disclaimer, there will be more coming. Um, when I was looking for a title for this presentation, I thought about calling it uh, desperately looking for, for context. But then I remembered there was a fantastic uh, feat of cinematography in 1985 Desperately Seeking Susan <laughs> with Madonna. Wonderful movie. <laughs> and uh, therefore I decided to, to call my lecture Desperately Seeking Context because as you might or might not know, Susan had been found. Maybe you will find the context as well. And um, what, to, what to expect from this lecture? And first uh, there'll be an introduction because there always has to be one. Uh, and I will talk briefly about myself and try to put myself in the context, pun intended, you may laugh. <laughs> and uh, uh, there will be a short, short definition of localization, then a list of some often encountered problems, including looking for context in different and weird places. And at the end, I'll add a few comments on automated translations as well. So first, a few words about me. Uh, as I've said, my name is Richard Hainowski, and um, I have a dark secret. I'm a gamer. I love games. I have always loved games. It all started for me when I was approximately six years old in 1979. That's me. It's, well, I'm three years old here, but I couldn't find a picture of me being six, six years old. And um, at that time, my father took, took me to his friends, who has just come back from Hungary. And th that friend brought with himself a magical box. A box that made objects move on the TV screen. And uh, when I saw this, I immediately fell in love with games. And, um, you know, I play all kinds of games. I love uh, RPG games, pen and paper games, uh, miniature games. I have a huge board games collection, like 600, probably. And, of course, all the computer video games. Uh, to, well, and um, therefore, I wanted to, well, to make games. Uh, when I was uh, in my secondary school, I, I joined uh, mathematics and physics faculty because I wanted to be a software engineer later on. Unfortunately, it turned out that my math foo was not strong enough, but I knew a little bit about uh, English, so I applied to Wrocław University, to English department, I passed the exams, and uh, in 1992 I started studying. And in 1996 I found an uh, advertisement in a magazine called Secret Service. There was this small company called CD Project. You might know them now. <laughs> They were not making games at the time, they were publishing games. And um, they asked if there, anybody, if there is anybody that uh, would help them translate games. So I took my pen, I took my paper, and I wrote a letter, you know. I didn't have an email at the time. And uh, I sent them the letter and they replied, sending me some photocopied manuals of, uh, to, of games to, to translate. And thus it started in 1996, 23 years later, and I'm still there. Uh, all, I also had a brief stint uh, as a project lead for The Witcher for 18 months, yeah? It was 18 months, some, something like that, yeah. <laughs> um, nevertheless, uh, through that time, uh, uh, well, I, I created my, my company called Albion, and we, we have um, mainly two clients. You might know them, quite, well, small companies like Blizzard and Epic Games. 
So we translate games for Blizzard and Epic Games, mostly. There, there are some other companies. And through the years, uh, I translated quite a few games. But first, a disclaimer here. I, I think I've lost this one slide, but we'll come to, be, to this later. All the examples in this presentation are mostly based on real English-Polish translation projects. Therefore, a certain amount of Polish is to be expected and feared. I will provide translation on the go if it's necessary. Okay, and uh, yeah, here, here's the li well, some of the projects that I worked on are well, falling down. Um, just a few. The, the, there's more than 300, so I will not bore you with all of them, but some that I'm proud of, mostly. Um, but uh, at the end, there will be a pinnacle of my, my, my biggest achievement. Willy the Pooh Rumbly Tumbly Adventure. Fantastic game. Okay, um, let's go on. Uh, what, is, what is localization? And I coined this uh, short definition some time ago. This is means of adopting media to different languages, regional differences, and technical, technical requirements of target market. So, for example, we have uh, this gentleman. We want to localize him to a different market. And sometimes it goes like this. Sometimes it goes like this. This is supposedly a Turkish Spider-Man. But, uh, but we plan, we want to make it like this, yeah. That's, that's, that's the, the general idea. And um, this process is, is quite difficult, really. And uh, there are quite a lot of problems that uh, could be encountered during localization. And uh, among possible roadblocks, you can find badly prepared source material. And this is uh, almost, almost a, a real-life example. Um, let's say that we are making a game. and Let's say we call it Tiger based on William Blake's poem, The Tiger. And um, yeah, there's a logo. I prepared it. And there is the poem. Yeah? Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? What, in what distance, deeps or skies, burn thy fire of thine eyes? And so on. And let's imagine, let's imagine that William Blake or somebody else thought that it would be better if the text was sorted, you know, alphabetically. Why not? It, it, it's organized better. And let's, let's get rid of those lines. We don't need them, yeah? And then we get something like, and what at heaven with the tears, and what short, and what art, and, and so on, and so on. And this is based on a real-life example. Um, it happened with the game Enter the Matrix. Maybe you remember the game. Um, I didn't localize it, my friend did. And they received all the text from the game, starting from A, then N, then end, sorted uh, alphabetically, without any strings. And they were asked to translate it. Fortunately, uh, the guys at CD Project had uh, an amazing programmer who managed to, to extract the texts and audio and the graphics from the game, thus uh, making the translation localization possible. So badly prepared source material is one of the problems. Um, no support on developer publisher side. And this, this was very, very common in the, well, uh, at the end of the 20th century. Well, it, it sounds strange. Uh, well, like 20 years ago, uh, because we, I'm sorry, somebody's trying to get to me. Well, just a sec. Sound off. Uh, it was very common that we just received games from, from a publisher and, you know, do whatever you want. So we had to crack the game. We had to extract the text, we had to extract the audio and, and the graphics and translate it and put it back again. So, uh, and it also happens quite often right now that uh, the publisher, mostly publisher or developer is so busy that they think localization is so, so far away. Uh, so there is not so much important as, as other aspects and they just don't care. So we send them questions what is this, what is that, and we don't receive any answers, or we receive answers when it's too late, basically. 
other uh, problem, uh, technical problem, concatenation. Concatenation, which, me which is uh, creating f sentences, phrases, or even paragraphs out of um, different elements. And here's the, an example. Killer killed victim. So we have variables, killer and, and victim. There is an action killed, and um, we don't know what killer is. We don't know uh, if, it's, uh, if it's a name or if it's something, if it's a graphical element, we don't know, basically. And uh, at the bottom, we have just S1, S2, N, S3, and this is also a, a real-life example. And uh, we were asked to translate it, not knowing what goes behind those variables. And um, they probably come from some kind of database. We weren't provided any any information as to where they come from and what should be the order in Polish. So we just experimented and finally got to the proper version. It was in Polish we, we switched S2 and S1 and put N, which is a numerical variable in the brackets, and it worked. Uh, I, I won't show you exactly uh, because it was just a very, very long paragraph. So concatenation. And of course, if concatenation, tags and variables. This is a huge pain because um, you'll see there is a sentence in English, gather N1, S1, S2, and S3, and then use them to craft S4. Very simple question, a very simple sentence. If we translate it uh, just uh, into Polish without paying attention to the variables, we get, um, well, the same as in English, but the, the problem with Polish is that we, uh, we have noun cases, and uh, our nouns have to be in the proper form depending on the position in the sentence and the role in the sentence. And uh, all Slavic languages have this uh, characteristics, ex uh, with the exception of Bulgarian. Bulgarian lost its declension system. But in Polish, if we translate it like this, we will have just nominative in here, here, and here. And this is numeral. This is numeral. And this numeral uh, also takes different, different forms depending on the case of the, of, the, of the noun. So it also should be in the proper form. If we translate it into, into Polish like this and we put those variables, it, it looks horrible. For the no Polish speakers, believe me, it's horrible. And, um, but we can fix this. We can just list all those elements, putting the numerical value in the brackets so that it fits all the possible outcomes. And then we have uh, something that maybe is not as, uh, as clean as the, uh, as the full sentence, but still looks better. Just collect these ingredients and use them to, to do something. Uh, but this uh, uh, variable example is quite simple because the, there is something worse. This is, uh, this is a um, description of a, of, of a skill from the game. You, you'll see in a minute. Well, it's based on Diablo 3. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and um, we have some tags here. We have also uh, some uh, variables. And the problem is that with so many tags and so many variables, it's very easy to just, I don't know, forget a bracket or, or to forget an underscore. And, and then everything, um, well, sometimes even crashes. So we translate it to, to this, and it looks like this. Yeah in game. So um, if, if it's possible, uh, well, uh, there are devs here, so first please block your tags so they're not editable and, and, and uh, or, or maybe don't use them so extensively as, as in here. Um, let's go further on. We have gender issues. Uh, I will not be political here, just uh, gender issues, I mean how to translate uh, English sentence into into male and female, basically, because in English we don't have this problem, in, but in Polish, other Slavic languages, in French, also in, in Spanish, the, the, there's pro problem with translating English text into male and female form. So, there are, in my opinion, three ways to, of dealing with the problem. First is to translate all texts, both in male and female, or maybe also neuter in some instances, and that this is, in my opinion, the best solution because it's um, uh, 
basically uh, it solves all the problems. However, it's the most expensive because the publisher or developer has to pay twice for the text that is the same in English. Then uh, you can use gender tags. And the worst, definitely the worst solution is unisex paraphrase or translation. And I will show you how it, how it looks. First, gender tags. Uh, and the an example of a sentence. Why didn't you go there yesterday? And with, when we translate the sentence in male and female form, we just have different version of the, of the verb to go in the past tense, which is poszedłeś or poszłaś. Poszedłeś is for male, poszłaś is for female. And we can use also gender tags. So we just translate the first part of the sentence and the, uh, the male or female are put in some tags to mark that this element should go male for, for, for male character and, or, and female for female character. However, however, this is, this is an example from, I think, Guild Wars. This is the, the way it was used in Guild Wars. So first we have square bracket, M column, curly bracket, the text. We, we close the curly bracket, we close the square bracket. Do you see some problems here? It's very... It has some, it has some pros, it's flexible and it lowers the, 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 the cost, but it's very error prone. Very error prone. Here, it looks almost the same, but this and this is different, which means that the game could potentially crash even. So, still, it is still the better option that using uh, Unisex translation, because uh, in Polish we don't have problems with uh, with uh, present tense. We can when we say something in present tense, it's is the same for for male and female. But with past tense and future tense, we use different forms. And there there are some games like RPG games with lots of text and lots of journals or lots of diaries and lots of quest descriptions that. Uh, that uh, describe something that happened in the past. That I went somewhere and did something. And, um, or I, why didn't you go there yesterday? And how to translate it if we can't use uh, any tags because the um, developer forgot that there are grammar systems different than English. And it happened with, uh, for example, Fallout 3 or Morrowind or Oblivion. Huge games, huge games that had to be translated in unisex like from, from start to end, like four, 400,000 words for each of them. And um, how to do it? It, it? it is possible. We can use passive voice. We can use such uh, phrases as manage to. Why didn't you manage to do something? We can switch the order. We, for example, if, if there is a sentence like, uh, um, did you meet somebody? And we know the gender of this somebody, we can switch it. Did somebody meet you? Yeah? And, uh, but this is a very, very difficult process. And, and, the, and very often, the, uh, the final product looks quite artificial, because how often can we see manage to manage to manage to all the time? So in my opinion, the first option is the best. This is the option used, for example, in, in Diablo or in, 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 in Deus Ex, Invisible War. It's most expensive, but it, it's the best, basically. Okay, we have gender issues behind us, hopefully. But there are other, other problems, like fonts and other graphical elements. Um, I will just show you, basically. Um, this is a Call of Duty, and you see here, this, this font and this font is not from the same character set as, as, the, as, the, as the others. Why is that? Um, Polish belongs to so-called Latin 2 set of characters. Not all the fonts are present in this, in this uh, set of fonts. Um, therefore, if there is a font that it, well, it is not pre present there, it's exchanged to some probably, uh, usually Arial font that is present in Latin 2. Um, another example here looks horrible and there is also a spelling mistake here. So um, 
And another example uh, that I'm not very proud of, because this is a game I worked on, this is Diablo 2. And um, short story, it was uh, year 2000, I was in Dublin working uh, for Harvest Entertainment on Diablo 2 translation, and there was this font uh, used in Diablo call, call, called Exocet. You might know this font, it's very popular. The first Witcher logo was in Exocet as well. And um, the problem was that this font didn't support Polish special characters. So we did what we Poles do, we improvised, and we created our own Exocet font. The problem is that it, we didn't know that. It was illegal, you know. It, the fonts had to come from so-called font foundries. So they for, uh, forbade us to, to use the font and proposed a font that was quite similar and looked like this. It's, it's quite similar. The problem with the font that we used was that, eventually, that it had double line spacing. And this is the same item in English and in Polish. As you can see, the Polish version takes quite a lot of space. And in fact, uh, some of the items were so complicated and had so many lines of description that Polish version expanded behind the screen and it was a low resolution. And what happened then? The game crashed. Uh, it was partially fixed in the expansion because they bumped the resolution to 800 by 600, but I, as, as far as I remember. So some of the problems were fixed, but they added new items that were even more complicated. And uh, finally, they, they managed to fix it in, in, in some patch, but the, the Polish font looked, or still looks, quite bad compared to Exocet. It's not as compressed. And in my opinion, I, I would be very happy if, if it was, if, if there was coming, you know, a new Diablo 2 version that I could fix this unfortunate uh, mishap that happened. Okay, so we have fonts behind us, and now let's talk about context, the most important thing, or limited context. First of all, uh, with books, movies, and comic, context is almost always there. But, well, another short story, not always, because um, um, when we were recording some stuff for, for games like Battlefield or, or Diablo, we were doing it in Start Studio, which is also responsible for production of Disney movies and so on. And the, when they receive a movie from Disney, for example, they don't see the movie, they, they, they just see the lips of the characters. So they are also not provided the full context. They, they see the lips so, so they can lip sync the, the, the audio to the, to the image. But they don't see the whole image because you know, it's, it's, it's watermarked, it's copy protected, and you, you basically can't do anything about it. So it's, um, but with books and comics, it's usually very, very easy to, to get the context because you, it's before you. Uh, but game localization often resembles cracking the Enigma machine. Yeah, that's Enigma machine. Uh, you receive scraps of info and have to decode the message. Any kind of context helps a lot, really. So, what kind of context do we have? We have uh, something called full context. But um, if, if it were so easy to find, I, I should change the name of the presentation to fantastic beasts and how to, or where to find them. Um, so full context is very, very rarely to, to find. Uh, so we have partial context, and for the purpose of this presentation, I um, took a liberty of dividing it into some different aspects, like, for example, oh, it goes slow, verbal, verbal context. So w we see a sentence, or there are other sentences that precede uh, the sentence that we translate, we can guess the context out of words. We have also visual context. We just see an image. And another story that I'm not very proud of, there is a game, you might have, you might have heard about it, it's called Fortnite, uh, and we localize Fortnite. And um, um, Fort uh, the guys at Epic are very Mm, very helpful, really, and it was purely, well, it was just, just our mistake. We, we, we received info on some update that they will be introducing uh, golf carts or shopping carts to the game. And they sent a bunch of, bunch of uh, strings. 
and one of those strings was power slide. And we didn't know what it was, because we knew that this uh, patch would introduce electric cars. Yeah? So we thought it was you know, electric power sli slide, maybe something that slides, maybe an electric car. So we translated it into uh, electric cart. Yeah. Um, it wasn't electric cart. It wasn't electric cart. Um, because it was, you know, it was this maneuver that you do when you push uh, the handbrake and you slide. So, um, when we got the, the image, it helped, really. So, we changed it into, you know, power slide, yeah, push these knarens, as it should be. Um, another type of context is, um, ah, this is, uh, before I go any further. This is uh, very funny because uh, it's prasa uh, abukontinua, which which translates uh, for for non, non Polish speakers, it's uh, printing press to continue. So it's a printing press. Um, the, this is Wasteland 2, the game that was localized, I think, by Kulak, and and they knew about it. But the problem is that this prasa string or press was hard coded into the game, and there was only one string for both printing press that existed in the game and the, and the command press. So, the game took the string from the database and they preferred to have prasa rather than have a machine called nachishni. So, uh, well, that, that was on, on, on the dev side. But uh, it's, it's more difficult to explain this one. Printing press at the beginning. Prasa na potontek. Printing press. And uh, I really think that this is, uh, well, this is caused by automatic translation. Just a, a program took the word press and then to begin and, and uh, created this abomination. And... Um, Coming back to this uh, one string, there is another anecdote, so to say, but well, anecdote. It's not an anecdote because it's still, uh, it still happens. Th there is this word friend. You know the word friend. It's very often used in some friend lists in, in consoles like Xbox or PlayStation 4. The thing is that uh, Sony and Microsoft have different translation for the friend. So for PlayStation, in PlayStation, friend is Priachel. And uh, in Xbox, friend is znajomy. Um, two different words. Znajomy is more like acquaintance. Uh, Przyjaciel is more, more like close friend. And the thing is that both the companies need or, or have their own glossaries that we have to follow. If we don't follow the glossary, the game will not be certified, most probably. So if we translate friend if there is only one string friend, if we translate it as Przyjaciel, it will be accepted by Sony, but not by Microsoft. If we translate it as Naomi, it will be tra well, accepted by Microsoft, but not by, by Sony. So um, we always ask um, the developers to, to provide us with two strings for friend, for example. And uh, I just wonder what would happen if Nintendo came to Poland officially, and they decided, for example, to translate friend as Kumoter. Odruch, <laughs> three versions of the same of the same translation. Okay, let's go further. Uh, so we have uh, visual conte context, and now, if we have visual, there is also audio context. And uh, audio context is uh, something that's uh, very important during re recordings. And uh, I've uh, taken part in numerous recording sessions, and never in my life. Uh, it, it happened that uh, we had all the audio files present. There are always some audio files missing. Even we, we, we have the text, but sometimes there are no, not all, not all uh, audio files are present. So, what to do? We ask actors to uh, do something called white, record, white recording or blank recording. So they just read and interpret the interpret the, the, the text in the way they they feel. Sh it should be, uh, but they are sometimes wrong. But we don't have any co any context. We don't have any information 
on as, as uh, the, the proper, uh, pr proper audio should look, or should, should sound rather. Uh, so, um, it also happens uh, uh, sometimes when uh, the, the, the English game was recorded with two or more people in the studio, but when we re record it, it's always, almost always, one actor. So, he reads all his line, and let's say two weeks later, another actor comes, and they read all the lines without hearing the previous actor's lines. And sometimes there is a problem with that because the dialogue doesn't work properly. And that's one of the reasons that uh, Polish, and not po only Polish localizations, not always sound as good as the original, original material. Okay, let's go on. We also have something called internal context. And this is um, the idea that we uh, created uh, in our own environment. This is context that we have um, created ourselves, like by creating some glossaries, by creating some style guides, for example. And another anecdote, why style guides are so important, there was the game called Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 2, to be exact, and um, the game used uh, imperial, uh, imperial system uh, as to weights and, and, and uh, uh, length. So they, they had pounds, inches and feet. We decided to move to metric system, to change it all to kilograms and, and meters. So we uh, asked the translators, you know, when you see one pound is like half a kilo, you know? Um, and there was this quest. We had to deliver iron ore to the Temple of Helm. I remember it exactly. And we had to deliver uh, approximately two, two, 200 pounds of iron ore. So I uh, translated this as 100 kilos. Other translator, who was much more meticulous, um, made it 90 kilos, because it's, it's not exactly 100, it's 90. And one translator just changed pounds to kilograms. So, uh, the, the officer at, the, at the, Helm, the Temple of Helm asks you to bring me 100 uh, kilograms of uh, iron ore. Then I go to my journal and I see, bring me 90 kilograms of iron ore. Uh, and eventually I have to bring him 200 kilograms of iron ore. So that's uh, why in internal context is so important, that you have to create this, um, uh, this um, relationship between translators, that they basically use the same terminology, the same glossaries, the same, the same phrases, and they use the same ways to, uh, to convert imperial to metric, for example. And there is also another uh, type of context that I called puzzly. This is a puzzle. We have to solve a puzzle. And I will show you some of the puzzles here. These are real life examples again. This is uh, from Bad Company 2, Battle of Bad Company 2. We have, we have a character named Skipper who says, the up there, patrol. And Usually, up there means over there, before us. So we translated it like this. It was the other way around. <laughs> in the game, when we saw, it was that we were swimming in a dinghy, and there was a patrol up there, literally up there. But um, in the game, the characters in Polish says, you know, there, there's a patrol in front of us. So it is... We couldn't guess it, unfortunately, so there is a bug in the game. Another uh, example, you have to leave the plane. And uh, it's uh, quite ambiguous because it, the plane could be a plane of existence or it could be an aircraft. And the game was Icewind Dale. There are no aircrafts in Icewind Dale, but one uh, of the translators was not uh, very fond, I think, of... Uh, planes of existence, so he translated it, you have to escape this aircraft when, he was, when the character was followed by a demon. <laughs> um, yeah, true story. <laughs> uh, another, I didn't know you killed it, and we you abs have absolutely no idea who, who Tuesday is. What is it? Uh, I, I don't know who, who is you. We don't know it. We have to guess. The string doesn't tell us anything. It's string 10. Uh, 
So we just have to improvise, and this is very often what happens. We, we improvise, we use our experience and some, uh, some knowledge to guess what the, what the author wanted to, to convey, what, what message he wanted to convey. And another, why didn't you see my friend? Who is the friend? Is, is he or is, is it she or he? Because if it's he, it's Psyachel. If it's she, it's Psyachuka, two different words. Uh, and again, we have no option but to follow our instincts, basically. And some more complicated examples, only one word. Lock. Is it lock? Is it lock or is it lock? Which one? Is it a lock of her? Is it a lock? Or is it a gridlock like in wrestling? Um, there is some info here. Account action. So we can guess this is an action. This probably is a verb. If it's a verb, then probably it's not her or wrestling related. It probably is something with locking an account because there's account also. So probably it is zabloku in Polish. But we can be only guessing here. We don't know for sure. Again. Jumper. Is it jumper? Jumper? Jumper, fantastic movie. Or jumper. And again, this string helps us because it says HDD. And th this is HDD jumper. So we can translate it properly into Polish as Zworka. That's the name for it. Not Scotek, for example. OK. Another. Scroll, 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 or scroll. And here we don't know, basically, because the, uh, the string doesn't tell us anything. It can be a scroll, or it can be the action of scrolling. So again, we have to improvise. And maybe, maybe we manage to, to score the jackpot and, and translate it properly. OK. There are also some uh, issues with address C because in English there is no, no difference between uh, singular and uh, pl plural when we talk to somebody. We use the same form, but in Polish we use different forms. So, for example, those, uh, uh, those lines may appear in imperative form like look up, cover me, shoot that bastard over there. But in Polish it will be different translation depending on who we address, if it's one person or more. If it's one, we'll, we'll, we'll say, but if we see, uh, if there's more people, we'll say, we'll say, but we don't know, and we don't know actually how the scene looks, what's going on. So we have to improvise again. Um, it may also appear in situations like, as you know, there can be countless examples. If I addre address you, there are plenty of you here. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, the, I know that the, I should translate it into plural form, but if there is only one speaker, I don't know. I, I basically don't know. Okay. And uh, automatic translations, because I, I know that the time is running out. Uh, automatic translation, uh, what is this? If this is the, some way of uh, conveying uh, translation in machine form, well, by machine. And um, machines don't think yet, so they can't deduce, they can't improvise, they just have a, a pattern that they follow. And usually, unfortunately still, they follow it in a very, very wrong way, and I'll show you why. So automatic translations can be sometimes used, but you, we, we lose context. Well, the machines don't recognize any context whatsoever. So are they worth it? And in my opinion, in the current state of affairs, they absolutely are not worth a dime. And why? That's why. I will read it in Polish and try to convey the message. Przedaż najbardziej przyjęty krytycznie super bohatera gier wydane jakikolwiek. This is just, it's, it's, a, it's a gibberish in Polish, total gibberish. It says, uh, pre, uh, Pre-order, best, acclaim, superhero, ever, game, whatever. And here, you see, it says, in, in Polish it's Głoska Bezdźwięczna, in English it is um, a voiceless sound, this. 
voiceless sound. What, what is it? Uh, anybody has a uh, phone? At, oh, go to Google Translate and write down media. Really, do it, please. Google Translate and from English to Polish, media. I will show you. Oh, yes. <laughs> so uh, there was a machine that took the word media, which uh, Polish form is media, and created a voiceless sound, which doesn't make any sense. I don't know how it got there. Some, some, somebody must have programmed it, it, it in Google Translate, but it looks horrible. Another example. Um, this is a place, I think, Xbox store. Um, PlayStation, okay. Uh, Ark Survival Pack, dać graczom wersję PS4. Arki Survival ewoluowały w pełni zaktualizowane. In English, Ark Survival Pack, give player PS4 version uh, um, evolved full patch. This edition creator contains no content earlier. You see the problem. It's, it's gibberish, total gibberish. So, um, in my opinion, in the current state of affairs, if, if there is something more than one very simple sentence, there is no point of using automatic translations. However, however there is another uh, option. You might use automatic translation if you create your own term base or translation memory using your own CAT tool like MemoQ, for example, or Traders. Then you populate the translation memory and where, whenever and wherever the, the same sentence pops up, uh, the translation is suggested. And the program checks if the uh, new proposed version ap appeared uh, in the company of other translated lines. Uh, if so, it suggests it. But uh, still, it doesn't work as, as well as it should. OK. And uh, the last example, I'm, I'm not sure it's visible, but it's, uh, it's only It'll only be clear for, for Polish speakers because <laughs> this is official Chrome store or Google store for games. And they use Google Translator to translate all their descriptions. And trzy uh, denurkowania gra z diabłem na szybki przejazd do samobójstwa. Weź wzruszający spacer po życiu cudzoziemca złapany w środku ludzkości. Jedz mniejsze ryby rośnie, a następnie pourosły na tyle można zjeść większe ryby. <laughs> well, uh, believe me, it's, it's total gibberish in, in, in Polish. Well, as you, as you might hear from, from, the, from the laughter. And, um, and Google uses this on, on their own website. So they, are, they must be very proud of the translation system. However, it doesn't work whatsoever. And this, on this um, uh, funny note, I'd like to end this uh, presentation. I, I hope I didn't bore you to death. Uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions, please free, free to ask. Be free to ask, and uh, I'll try to answer them as well as I p possibly could. Yeah. Uh, do you have a word that you take the most when translating? Either English or Polish. Um, I, <laughs> no, I love my friends. Um, uh, well, um, any, actually, any word that, that is on its own without any additional information can be very painful to translate. Um, I hate any uh, commands that might be commands, uh, but might be not, like jump, go, very simple words that can take different forms in Polish because, because Polish is quite a complicated language, really. So, um, yeah, anything without context I hate, but I still try to do it. Um, uh, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, because uh, there is a game called Diablo 3 and we introduced some, some Polish memes into, in, into the game and uh, w with the blessing of Blizzard. Um, we, I don't want to overdo it, basically, because if there's, there are too many such, uh, such memes or, or, or funny things, it, it gets, 
basically stale after some time. But yeah, I tried to, to add something, especially if there was something in the original version, because in the original version, the, there's also kind of meme, because the, the creature was called Sarko, which was, um, well, uh, the, at the time it was the president of, of fr the French Republic, so uh, Sarkozy. So um, we used just different, different uh, meme. And, um, but we introduced quite a few Polish uh, descriptions for the uh, legendary items, and they have the, the, some um, connotations with Polish li literature, movies, and so on. Yep. Yeah, so thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much.